Factorio has been around for years and is still somehow one of the most complicated and yet satisfying games on the market. Today we're going to remove some of that complexity and go through everything you need to know to grow your very first factory. Just before we load into the actual game, I want to mention one thing in setting up the map generator. If you are brand new to the game and want a more relaxed experience where you can take your time, I strongly recommend you either turn off enemies entirely or turn on peaceful mode so they don't attack you first. To me, Factoro is all about base building rather than fighting aliens, so I like to take my time and aliens just don't really allow for that. If you want to fight aliens, that's just fine, just understand they add an extra layer of complexity to an already complex game. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's actually get into the game. So you crash land in an unknown area and you immediately want to get to work setting up a base. Ideally you want an area that's got all the three ores of copper, coal and iron all relatively close to each other with some water not too far away. If you get a spawn that feels like you're going to be walking around way too much in the early game, then feel free to just restart the game and it'll reload you a different map until you get one that you like. Once you find a map that you are happy with, if there are any larger pieces of spacecraft debris nearby, break those some iron plates since it'll save you an extra step of crafting. After this, you'll want to set up some mining operations for the three major resources in this order. Coal, iron, then copper. Coal is really easy. You'll spawn with a burner mining drill, so place that on some coal, build a furnace using some stone, and place some coal into the drill and it'll fill up the furnace in no time. The furnace is just acting as a chest in this instance. Of course, eventually the fuel in the drill will need replacing, so get mining some iron ore and place this into the furnace to make more iron plates. Use these iron plates to make three more burner mining drills. Place another on the coal so that both drills are outputting into each other. Press Alt to bring up these arrows, which makes things way easy when placing pretty much anything. This will cause the drills to mine until they run out of ore since they will keep topping each other up with coal. They can fill their inputs and outputs, so be sure to empty them regularly by control clicking them every time you walk past. Place the other two drills on some iron and some copper and output these into furnaces. These will need manually supplying with coal, but we're not going to rely on them for long, so it's not the end of the world. You can also use control clicking to fill them up with coal if you have it selected with your mouse. Once all of these operations are moving, you can start to find a spot to set up your first power system. Look for some water with a nice clear space nearby, since this can get pretty sizable very fast. You're going to want to build an offshore pump, a boiler and steam engine, as well as some electrical poles to connect everything together. Simply place the pump in the water, use the pipes to connect this to a boiler, place the steam engine on the output of the boiler, and once you feed the boiler coal, you're all set. Now we need to build something to use this electricity, and that's where electric mining drills come in. These will be much more efficient on your coal than burner miners, not to mention much faster. Initially, just set up a single drill on your coal, iron and copper to get you started before you worry too much about ratios. Since electric drills are much faster than burners, your furnaces will quickly fill up, so it's best to set up two and use inserters to fill them with ore to keep resources coming in as quickly as possible, especially iron. You can never have enough iron. Simply place a belt or chest onto the outputs of the drill and add two inserters pulling away from the chest into the coal fueled furnaces and they should divide the ore between themselves in no time. Now you're going to want to automate your power since hauling coal back and forth will quickly become a waste of time. Build a belt from the nearest coal patch to the boiler, leaving room for another steam engine daisy chain. Place an insert from the belt to the boiler and now as long as that belt has a steady stream of coal, you shouldn't have to worry about fueling your power for a pretty long time. Now we can get to work with ratios and increase mining output, but for that we're probably going to need some technology to keep things efficient. Your first couple of research projects should always be automation and logistics as they provide everything you need for early automation. Build yourself a lab and fill it with the required number of research flasks for each and then we'll get to work setting up our early automated factory. Any automation, whether it's your first assembler or your 500 part machine to make one product, is all about one thing. Removing work from yourself and letting the machine handle it to save you some time. To start off with, we're going to set up a super basic red science assembly chain that's going to chug away at the starting text while we get to work planning the beginnings of the factory. To do this, you'll need three assemblers, two for the actual signs and a third to use excess goods to make belts for us, since we're going to need a lot. For red signs, you need copper plates and iron gears, so set up one assembler making iron gears in the middle of the other two, like this. Use inserters to pull out of the gears and into the other assemblers and feed an iron belt to the gear and belt assemblers. Feed copper into the red science assembler and then pull from that directly into a lab. If you want to slightly speed up research then you can set up labs in a chain and have them insert into each other when we have plenty of supply. Once this is up and running we're going to prepare for green science and for that you're going to want to start making the beginnings of a main bus. This is one of the many playstyles in Factorio and the one that I believe to be the most beginner friendly since everything ends up being accessible in the same place. Since I had a lot of time in my hands whilst tech ticked along I planned out my full belt of iron and copper using 48 furnaces for each but to start off with I only built about 8 which should be plenty to get you started. I like to use this layer that has built in chests acting as buffers so any excess will be stored there for use when supply cannot meet demand. If you want to use any of the blueprints I make during the video, then you can find them in the description. Full disclosure, I've been using this layout for years after seeing it in a video and I just cannot remember whose video it was, so I do apologise for that. 
After feeding these setups ore and coal, I brought the outputs to where I planned my main bus to be and started setting up my red and science factory. Now, you can have science or any setup going at any speed, but I find a good starting point is to build one of each science per second. That way you'll be able to feed plenty of labs for most early techs, no problem. Also, when planning assembly chains like this, I find it's best to just use the biggest open space you can to make the blueprint and then place it where you want it. For red science, it takes about six seconds to make one in these early assemblers, so we're gonna need six to make one per second. I like to work backwards to keep things neat, so I plan where these will go and figure out that they'll need three assemblers worth of iron gears. Feed this iron and copper plates and boom, it's all sorted. Now for green, that's a little bit more complex, but it's essentially just the same process. We need nine assemblers for one per second and these require inserters and transport belts. Again, just steadily work backwards. We need just under three assemblers for inserters and less than one for transport belts, meaning we can pocket the excess items to save us some manual crafting. Inserters do add some complexity since they need three items to be crafted, so we'll need two input belts and some long armed inserters to get everything they need. Aside from that, it's the same process as before of working backwards, figuring out how many assemblers of each component you need and connecting it all up neatly. Fill in your plates and if you've done everything right, it should feed straight through and begin crafting red and green science, which can then belt your labs to get researching. As I mentioned, you should have a few excess belts and inserters so you can come pick them up periodically to save some manual crafting. In my blueprint, I've added some chests that will actually fill up with these items, so you can just collect them from there. While setting this all up, it's also important to make sure that your power is able to keep up with all the new demand, so adding a few more boilers and steam engines is advised as well as a few more coal drills to keep them fueled up. If you build all of this at once, you're likely to run into some deficits of raw materials, so going into the mid game, you'll need to scale this up if you can afford to. That being said, unless you build a lot of labs at once, this one per second system will get backed up in no time and bring consumption back down to a reasonable level, so give it some time and it should be in a more manageable position to expand. You should also note that expanding your power system and having this many furnaces will create a lot of pollution, and if this pollution reaches aliens, if they are on your map, they'll begin to attack you, so build some weapons to prepare for that and research military and turrets. But expansion and defense is all for a separate video, and that is all that we have for today. I'll leave links down to the factorial ratio cheat sheets as well as any blueprints made in this video in my description below. Like, subscribe, and if you're into base building, then check out this video here for my complete beginner's guide to Stranded Alien Dawn.